In the annals of biblical history, the name Jezebel resonates with controversy and infamy. Her story unfolds in the pages of the Old Testament. During the tumultuous times of the 9th century BCE, let us delve deep into the life of Jezebel, who she was, who ultimately brought about her demise, why she was killed, and the profound lessons her life imparts. Before we go ahead, please like this video, share it with those who might need it, and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Also, turn on post notification that will alert you when we post new video. In today's episodes, we want to explore the life of Jezebel, who she was, why she was killed, and the lessons her life imparts in the Bible. Who was Jezebel? Jezebel's origins and family. Jezebel, a Phoenician princess, entered the biblical stage through her marriage to King Ahab of Israel. Her background and lineage were rooted in Sidon, a coastal city known for its devotion to pagan deities, 1 Kings 16 verse 31. And as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, he took for his wife Jezebel the daughter of Ethbal king of the Sidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. 1 Kings 16 verse 31. Marriage to Ahab. Jezebel's marriage to King Ahab marked a pivotal moment in Israel's history. Her influence extended beyond the royal chambers, as she actively promoted the worship of the Canaanite god Baal, challenging the faith of Israel in Yahweh, 1 Kings 16 verses 32 to 33. So Ahab made an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he built in Samaria. 1 Kings 16 verse 32. Jezebel's Actions. Promotion of Baal Worship. Jezebel's most notorious action was her fervent promotion of Baal worship, which led many Israelites astray. She introduced idolatry into the kingdom of Israel, erecting altars and temples to Baal, 1 Kings 16 verses 32 to 33. And Ahab made an Asherah. Ahab did more to provoke the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger than all the kings of Israel who were before him. 1 Kings 16 verse 33. Persecution of the prophets of Yahweh. Jezebel's zeal for Baal was matched by her ruthless persecution of the prophets of Yahweh. She ordered the execution of many faithful servants of God, such as Elijah's encounter with the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, 1 Kings 18 verse 4. And Jezebel sent messengers to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. 1 Kings 19 verse 2. Who killed Jezebel? The role of Jehu. Jezebel's reign of idolatry and persecution could not go unchecked. Jehu, anointed by God, was tasked with executing divine judgment upon the house of Ahab. He became the instrument of God's justice, 2 Kings 9 verses 6 to 10. Then Jehu came out to the servants of his master, and one said to him, Is all well? Why did this mad fellow come to you? And he said to them, You know the fellow and his talk. And they said, That is not true, tell us now. And he said, Thus and so he spoke to me, saying, Thus says the Lord, I anoint you king over Israel. 2 Kings 9 verses 11 to 12. The sequence of events leading to Jezebel's death. Jehu's mission unfolded swiftly. Jezebel, faced with her impending fate, resorted to using makeup in a desperate attempt to maintain her dignity, 2 Kings 9 verse 30. However, her end was inevitable as Jehu's soldiers fulfilled the prophecy of her demise, 2 Kings 9 verses 33 to 37. So they threw her down, and some of her blood spattered on the wall and on the horses, and they trampled on her. 2 Kings 9 verse 33. Why was Jezebel killed? 
divine judgment and prophecy against Jezebel. Jezebel's death was not a mere historical event. It was a fulfillment of divine judgment and prophecy. God had declared retribution against her for her wickedness and idolatry. 1 Kings 21 verse 23 And of Jezebel the Lord also said, The dogs shall eat Jezebel within the walls of Jezreel. 1 Kings 21 verse 23 Please don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe right now. Her role in promoting idolatry. Jezebel's enthusiastic promotion of Baal worship. And her suppression of Yahweh's prophets contributed to her downfall. The worship of false gods and the persecution of God's faithful servants. Invited divine retribution. 1 Kings 18 verses 4 and 1 Kings 19 colon 1 dash 2. And he, Elijah, said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life, to take it away. 1 Kings 19 verse 10 Important Lessons from Jezebel's Story The Dangers of Idolatry and False Worship Jezebel's legacy serves as a stark warning against the dangers of idolatry and false worship. Her promotion of Baal led many astray, emphasizing the importance of remaining steadfast in faith. Exodus 20 verses 3 to 5. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Exodus 20 verses 3 to 4. The consequences of leading others astray. Jezebel's actions not only affected her, but also led an entire nation away from the worship of Yahweh. This highlights the profound responsibility leaders have in influencing the faith of others. Matthew 18 verse 6. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Matthew 18 verse 6 The importance of faithfulness to God's commands Jezebel's fate underscores the significance of obedience to God's commands. Remaining faithful to the one true God is essential. Even in the face of societal pressures and temptations, Deuteronomy 6 verses 4 to 5 here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul and with all your might. Deuteronomy 6 verses 4 to 5. The role of divine judgment and consequences for actions. Jezebel's tragic end serves as a reminder that divine judgment is a reality. Actions have consequences, and God's justice will ultimately prevail, Galatians 6 verse 7. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. Galatians 6 verse 7. In conclusion, the annals of biblical history. Jezebel stands as a cautionary tale. Her life and actions serve as a reminder of the perils of idolatry the consequences of leading others astray, the importance of faithfulness to God's commands, and the reality of divine judgment. Her story continues to resonate as a profound lesson for all generations. Final thoughts. As we reflect on the life and legacy of Jezebel, her story challenges us to examine our own choices, actions, and allegiances. In the pages of the Bible, we find not just historical accounts but timeless lessons that continue to shape our understanding of faith, obedience, and the consequences of our choices. One of our tasks is to illuminate our audience and encourage them to seek salvation if they are not in Christ already. So, if you have not given or surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, well, here is an opportunity as we would like to lead you to salvation in the Bible way. Tomorrow might be too late. 
I implore you, in the name of the Lord, not to delay your salvation any longer, starting today. Say this prayer please. O oh Lord God, I thank you for today. I believe in Jesus Christ the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross to save my soul. I believe God raised him from the dead, and he is alive today. I confess with my mouth Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. From this day, I receive by faith eternal life into my heart. Thank you, Lord, I have eternal life now, I am born again. I am a child of God, from this day. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, I want you to know that God heard you. And he has answered you. Say Amen to this prayer. Father in name of the Lord Jesus. I pray for everyone who prayed that prayer. Let the name of Jesus be named upon them from this moment. Satan has no claim over them anymore. They belong to Jesus Christ the Son of the Living God. I bless them with your word. I bless them with your love. I bless them with your grace. I bless them with the Holy Ghost. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Please locate any God-fearing believing church around you. And start a new journey in Christ. If you enjoy this video, please like, share it, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you and God bless you.